Michelle here. I've got a couple of stories to read to you today because reading is my favorite. Are you ready? This first story is called Belle and the Castle Puppy. Belle was strolling through the castle garden one chilly spring day when she heard a whimpering sound. A puppy was huddled outside the castle gates. He looked cold and dirty. Oh, you poor thing, Belle cried. Let's get you warmed up and fed. She wrapped the puppy up in her red cloak and hurried to the castle. Belle and the enchanted objects gave the puppy a bath. The coat rat brought a towel. When he was clean and dry, the puppy ate a bowl of warm stew. He's so cute. I hope we can keep him, Chip the teacup exclaimed. All the enchanted objects were happy to have a guest, but the ottoman remembered that he had been a real dog, just like the puppy. What if Belle and the Beast liked this dog better? The ottoman tried to get the princess's attention. With a funny little grrr, he raced around the kitchen, but no one noticed. A moment later, the puppy barked at the door. Do you want to go out to play? Belle asked. As Belle and the others followed the puppy outside, they didn't see the ottoman slink out behind them and walk in a different direction. They laughed as Belle threw sticks for the puppy to fetch. The beast walked up to Belle a while later. Someone has dug up my roses, he exclaimed. Then the beast saw the puppy. Did that dog ruin my garden? Get rid of him now, the beast roared as he stomped away. A moment later, the ottoman ran past Belle and the others. His legs were muddy. The ottoman dug up the garden, Belle exclaimed. But why? asked Lumiere, the candelabrum. As Belle watched the ottoman chase after the beast, she suddenly understood. Oh, poor little guy, she said. He just wanted some attention too. Suddenly the puppy raced after the ottoman, barking playfully. They both disappeared among the trees. What if they don't catch up to the beast? They'll get lost, Belle exclaimed. I have to bring them back safely. But it's getting dark, Miss Potts protested. Belle looked at the long shadows creeping through the forest. Clutching her cloak tightly, she took a deep breath and started towards the trees. Wait, Lumiere called to Belle. I'll come and light your way. Thank you, Belle said as she picked up the candelabrum. I'm glad you're coming. Me too, I think, Lumiere replied, but his flames flickered nervously. Belle walked along a path. She had come this way before. Puppy, Ottoman, she called. She hoped that they would meet up with the beast. She was looking forward to returning to the castle. A moment later, something rustled in the bushes. What is that? Lumiere whispered. I hope it's just squirrels, Belle answered. They must be very big squirrels, Lumiere replied. Belle picked up a large stick, and then she and Lumiere walked on, calling for the puppy and the ottoman. Belle realized that the puppy and ottoman had gotten lost. She was determined to find them. A short while later, Belle heard loud barking. I think we found them, Lumiere exclaimed. Belle followed the sound until she came into a clearing. The ottoman puppy, the ottoman puppy stood under an enormous tree. The puppy was growling and barking loudly. What's wrong, Belle wondered aloud. Then she looked around and gasped. A large wolf was sitting nearby. The puppy is protecting the ottoman, Lumiere exclaimed. He's too small to stop that wolf for long, Belle said. He needs our help. Quickly, Belle and Lumiere, Belle put Lumiere on the ground and lit the stick she had been carrying. She ran toward the wolf swinging it. Get away, get away, she shouted. But the wolf didn't move. Just then the beast showed up. The wolf ran away, yelping with fear. The puppy tried to save the ottoman, Belle told the beast. They are brave little fellows, the beast answered, cradling the puppy in one arm and the ottoman in the other. He led Belle to the castle. Later that night, everyone settled by the fireplace. Belle watched the beast stroke the ottoman and feed biscuits to the puppy. May the puppy stay until I can find him a home, she asked. The beast cleared his throat. His home is here, with us, he answered gruffly. Belle smiled. She was glad that the beast had come around. The very next day, the beast presented the puppy and the ottoman with shiny badges. From now on, they would be the official protectors of the house. Yip, yip, woof, woof. They couldn't have been any more excited. The end.
have one more story for you guys today. This story is called A Friend for Felipe. Felipe is my horse. It was a beautiful morning when Bella arrived at Felipe's stable with a surprise for her friend. Guess what I have? She called happily as she hurried to the horse's stall. The first carrots of the season, Felipe. I picked them just for you. Felipe was not as happy as Belle had hoped. He snipped the bunch of carrots, then when Belle offered him one, the horse pushed her hand away. Is something wrong? Belle asked, alarmed. Felipe was always hungry. Felipe hung his head and sighed. Belle decided that she had to cheer up her friend, but how? If only you could talk, Belle said. You could tell me exactly what to do. Later that morning, Belle hurried to the castle library. She gathered all the books about the horses she could find, and she began to read. Sacre bleu, cried Lumiere when he, Codsworth and Chip, saw all the books. What are you doing, princess? I want to cheer up Felipe, Belle explained. I hope these books would help me figure out what's wrong, but I'm not having much luck. You should brighten his stall, Lumiere suggested. It's important to have the right atmosphere, you know. I believe that music is the key to happiness, Cogsworth said. It always made me smile when I was an enchanted flock. Or how about a bubble bath, Chip chimed in. That used to cheer me up. Belle decided to give each idea a try. First, she and Lumiere de decorated Felipe's stall. They covered the walls with wallpaper and sprinkled flower petals on the floor. They piled pillows in the corners, hung curtains on the windows, and strung up beaded garlands. For a final touch, they hung a chandelier from the ceiling. Voila, Lumiere exclaimed. What more could a horse ask for? Felipe stared sadly out the window. I wish I knew, said Belle. Next, Cogsworth brought in an orchestra to the stable. Belle, Lumiere, and Chip listened politely as Cogsworth led the musicians through a very long concert. Felipe didn't seem to enjoy the music, though. Finally, Belle saw to it that Felipe was treated to a bubble bath fit for a king. If this doesn't make him smile, Belle told Chip, I don't know what will. In the end, although he was shiny and sweet smelling, Felipe was still glum, and Belle was still puzzled. Maybe the prince knows what to do, Chip suggested. Belle thought that was an excellent idea. She found the prince in his study and explained everything to him. I wish I knew what Felipe needed, she cried. Do you have any suggestions? The prince thought for a moment. Maybe a walk would do him good, he said. That always used to cheer me up. Of course, Belle agreed. That's a wonderful idea. Bright and early the next morning, Belle changed into her riding clothes and fetched Felipe. She led him to the edge of the forest where the royal orchards began. The sight of all the delicious fruits gave Belle an idea. Would you like an apple? The princess asked. Go ahead and choose one. Felipe wandered from tree to tree, eyeing each apple and even sniffing some. But he looked sad and his steps were slow and heavy. It was clear his heart wasn't in it. They continued until they reached a meadow. All of a sudden, Felipe's ears pricked up and his head snapped to attention. Then he charged off like a racehorse. Whoa, boy, Belle cried, nearly falling out of the saddle. Where are you going? But Felipe galloped on straight into the forest. At last, they emerged into a clearing filled with wild horses. Felipe whinnied and several of the other horses answered him. Finally, Belle realized what Felipe had wanted not a fancy stall or fine music or a bubble bath. He wanted to be with other horses. Felipe trotted eagerly over to the herd. Well, go on, Belle said as she swung out of the saddle. Go have some fun. Soon Felipe was playing with one of the horses. The two horses chased each other around the clearing and found a patch of delicious grass. All too quickly, the day was over and the sun began to set. Oh goodness, we've got to get going. I promise we'll come back soon, Belle told Felipe. As they started toward the castle, Belle heard the sound of hooves behind them. Well, look at that, Felipe, she exclaimed. It's your new friend. The horse who had played with Felipe all afternoon was following them home. By the time they reached the castle, the two horses were walking side by side. 
Welcome to our castle, Belle told the new horse. When they arrived, we're honored to have you as a guest. To show the horse she meant it, Belle fixed up the stall next to Felipe's. There, she said when she was through. Now this looks like a stable where a horse, or two, could live happily ever after. And that is exactly what they did. The end. Thank you so much for coming to my story time today. Goodbye.